Okay. All right. Well, good evening. <clears throat> good to see everybody. The April 15, 2024 Board of Education meeting will now come to order. Mr. Estes, would you lead all of us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? You. Got a ball fast. That was a bad idea. Mrs. Moak, roll call, please. Boynton. Mr. Ms. Carl. Here. Mr. Quintero. Here. Mrs. Buttimer. Here. Mr. Estes. Here. Mrs. Hill. Here. Mrs. Syed. Yes. Mr. Here. Lobach. Dr. Michael. Here. Dr. Bruno. Here. Thank you. All right. We have got a. How many times can I say special? celebration and recognition, and I'm going to turn to Melissa to facilitate. Absolutely. Um, before we watch the video, um, just want to warn people, it's a few minutes in length because it was really hard to boil it down to something short, and you'll see why in just a few minutes. Um, but just want to share some context on the restorative um, TOSA role. So those of you who have been tuning in and who have been with us, um, remember when we first started talking about the vision for the restorative TOSA role, and our goal was really just to start dipping our toes in slowly to provide students with restorative opportunities instead of just consequences and discipline. We created the opportunity, but Dean is what brought life to this role. And so tonight's video is going to capture that a little bit. And I've not watched it. I wanted to be surprised. So um, I'm going to ask Jim to get us started. From the minute I walked into Hadley Junior High, I fell in love with this place and I absolutely love coming to work every single day. Woo. And I need to express and share my love of science. So I'm gonna be like my middle school science teacher and I'm gonna inspire kids. always enjoyed making connections with my students and helping them to grow as a learner, um, both academically and social and emotionally. Well, I've been able to see Dina in a classroom for over 10 years. I could just see her connecting. She wears it on her sleeve. It comes out so powerful and so strong. She, she believes that education is about the relationship and is about the, the child. I've seen that as a science teacher. I've seen that in a PLC. I've seen that in a team meeting. And now I get to see it uh, as a restorative coach for all kids in our school. As soon as she walks in the door, she has a to-do list of kids she's checking in with, points she's got to, uh, has to assign. And uh, she is on the go. She's in the hallway. She's in the classroom, she's in her office, she's in the cafeteria. And again, if you want to find Dina, it would probably be best if we had some kind of tracking device on her uh, because she is in everywhere in the building trying to, again, work those relationships and work the connection with kids. My role is 80% being proactive and 20% reactive. We have set up expectations um, of consistency and more SEL lessons um, with teachers and I'm there as a support for the teachers. District 41 is one of our member districts. I, I go all over the state and provide professional development and administrator academies on restorative practices right from the get-go. Um, seeing that Dina is very relationship oriented um, with how she works with students, that to me is like the foundation of, of restorative practices and within this role. I mean, she's a workhorse. And so I, in the summertime, I'd give her a book to read and I would get an email the next day. And it's like, I have all these questions. And so um, it, it's really awesome, I think, to work with somebody that has such an appetite for this work. Um, and so as fast as I could give it to her, she was devouring it and then coming back and hungry for more. And I really think she wants to do the best job that she possibly can, not just because it's a new role, but because she truly believes in the relationship piece and working with kids. If you know Dina, anybody who's been to her classroom, anybody who's been to her office, 
What she values more than anything is the interpersonal relationship and connection that she makes with people. When I would see her in a classroom, I would very frequently see her sort of sitting next to students that are having difficulties in classes just understanding the material. Those are the students that she would go out of her way to spend a lot of time with. It was very easy for her, knowing how caring and giving of a person that she is, to sort of transition from a teacher doing that to now working with students um, more individualized outside of the classroom, but still trying to build them up and, and lift them up. My son Carl had Mrs. Sabara, had Dina for um, seventh grade science. He knew that when he went into class with Mrs. Sabara, he was going to learn, but he was also going to learn safely and that she created that space for them. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful for that year for him because what Dina did for him was give him confidence not only in the learning but also that he could be a part of a classroom and help that classroom to be better. And that's part of her gift. And what I love about uh, her role this year is that it's that positive approach. right? It's trying to reward appropriate behaviors as opposed to really coming down on students negatively. Um, and that starts with building those relationships. We're seeing them actually excited to show up to school because they know they have someone who actually cares about them on a personal day-to-day -day basis. I think the biggest thing is the fact that students see that she cares. I, even when she's disciplining students, it's done from a place of love. Uh, and so even now, I was just talking to a student not even five minutes ago who I was asking him how his year's going this year, and he's like, I'm doing great. I'm staying out of trouble. I'm building positive relationships with my teachers. Um, and it, I know it's a student that Dina works with on a regular basis. And her ability to approach students in a positive manner, to let them know first that they care, um, and then you know be able to handle what needs to be done, um, is I think makes the world of difference. Dina was one of the first people I met when coming to District 41. While she is an expert in instruction and in her content areas, what sets Dina apart really is how much she cares and how much heart she brings to her job. As we brainstormed the best way for our district to move into restorative practices for kids, characteristics came to mind and it was all about relationships with students and genuinely having a heart. Restorative is all about rebuilding relationships and Dina is so strong in relationships that I also couldn't think of anybody better for the role. Um, she has really transformed their approach to discipline and their approach to re rebuilding relationships and she has touched so many students in ways that when you walk into that building they want to tell you about it. From her I learned that I should um, I shouldn't always try and like one up everything and she's taught me not to argue and just stay there and listen and then after I can speak to them in a calm voice. She's good at this job, like she's <laughs> perfect for it. She makes me feel like I'm not excluded, like she's actually listening. We keep seeing each other in the hallway for some reason because I always have a late pass because I'm always like finishing up work and stuff. She call started calling me hall boy and then um, I started calling her hall girl. It was just like from there I just felt like I was gonna have like a good relationship with Miss Sabara. Um, I feel like she like gets like to know you a little bit more. And if a student acts a certain way, like sad and stuff, she'll try to like bump in and try to like see check in on you, like my happiness and stuff like that too. She's impacted. She works very diligently with our mental health team, with the school administration, trying to work with the students, putting together. Um, a daily reward incentive program. They experience their own growth and then they're so happy that they can come to her and show her how they've improved and so that they collect the reward. It's a tangible reward but then there's also the intangible reward that they're experiencing. They feel better about themselves and as a result Dina feels better for them. First when I went to seventh grade it was all a new experience for me. Then like a few months in I started go like started seeing like counselors. She says not to do noises, not to like fidget around too much. Stay stay like pay attention to the teacher. She influences me like to be a good person in life, to not always like be mean to people, like always give them a chance. I feel good about myself. I feel like I'm proud. I feel like she's like friendly, playful. Don't get on their bad side though. But mostly with my students, I want them to know that we all make mistakes and when we make mistakes, we then have to repair the harm. To be able to share that and um, for them both to understand how one another are feeling and 
um, I think has been so powerful. The end goal of the restorative practices coach is really to help Hadley be a, be a healthier community because she's coaching people how to manage their conflict and how to work better with each other and how to stay motivated and stay hopeful as we go through our school year. I joined late sixth grade, seventh grade. I had her all year until she left and she helped me with that a lot, making new friends. She has impacted me a lot. She recommended me for a student board. She helped me with that. And now I'm a student board member. I go to every single meeting. I raised a son with special needs and I saw the impact of a team of teachers, administrators, special educators, counselors, social workers, psychologists, all working together. That inspired me to be even better. Last year when I was um, diagnosed with a tumor um, and I needed to have surgery, a very scary feeling, but um, I found inspiration in my students because the whole time I was going through the scary point, I was inspired by thinking my students need me, so I need to come out better and stronger. So now that's what I want to inspire them to do. When I think of Dina, the, the two things that jump out to me are passion for teaching and the relationship she has with staff and students. When you know Dina, she knows you like nobody else does, and she cares about you and will do anything for anybody. On a whim, I asked her, like, hey, can I be your student teacher? And, you know, without hesitating, she said, yes, of course, like, not a problem. I really don't know where I'd be, you know, you know, without her saying yes to me as a student teacher. I so appreciate all she's done for um, my son now, who's graduated college and in the work world, and he will never forget her. I just think Ms. Sabar is just the best teacher I've had. I've improved a lot with my behavior. She, she made me into a better person, I could tell you that. Out of all the schools I've been, which is like five different schools, she's been the best teacher I've ever had. She has like a special spot in my heart. What she has done in less than a year has been more than we could have ever hoped. I'm just thrilled that it's something that I get to leave behind and um, look back on and, and see where she takes things next and the incredible things that happen for kids. If she's your friend, even if she's not your friend. She just loves people. She just wants everybody to do well. And she's just a, a positive, motivational, inspirational person to all of us. but I wanted to be a dentist. Well, well, Dina, if you had been a dentist, you'd be the absolute best dentist. My goodness. Wow, that was worth every second. Thank you. Ah, um, we've got a room full of people who appeared on the video. Uh, and maybe you said all that you needed to say on the video. Uh, however, uh, we do have this open public meeting and Dina is sitting right here. If any of you have any other thoughts or someone who's accompanied someone uh, who testified so brilliantly, <laughs> we can have you step up to the mi microphone and say a few, oh, come on now, brother, there you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And tell us who you are when you get up there, too. So we have that for the record. Uh, my name is uh, Jacob Shirali. And uh, I feel like Miss Barra is one of the best teachers at this school. No offense, of course. <laughs> uh, because she really, she understands the student a lot. I'm not saying that you guys don't. I'm saying that <laughs> she's more, I feel like I can be more honest with her because she has a better impact on me than other people do. 
so I don't always open up to other people. I just try and keep it in. But I feel like with you, I can actually like speak and like be honest about what happened. And yeah, that's basically it. All right. Well, that's. And I'm happy one. that you're here. Hugs for sure. Um, oh, it looks like, wait, we'll give Dina a second. Oh, bribing. Oh, that's the secret. Ah, that's how you do it. Is there anybody else who would like to take a minute and say something? Oh, Miss Nelson, of course, please. Erica Nelson, and um, so thank you for letting me give some voice to this. The thing that I want to say uh, about Dina and about this opportunity to um, lift her up is that this doesn't wasn't just the last 10 years of her teaching career, right? This is who she's been at her core. And I've known Dina for a long time. And when my son had her for science, um, part of the story is, is he came home and in our family at dinner time, we would do highlights and lowlights, you know, of the school day, not just what did you do, that type of thing. And his highlight that day was his science class, and that he could tell, and I think he's got a pretty good empathy muscle as a young man, but that he could tell when there were kids struggling in the classroom and he felt that for them that it didn't go unnoticed by you, that you picked up that energy. And that was the thing that was so powerful to him as a student, is that um, you saw that and you made sure that you connected him or another student to help that child that day. And this is a long time ago, because Carl is now going to be 26. So you've always been this person as an educator, and we are fortunate to have you and so many like you in this school. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, please? Oh, <laughs> I bet you can try. Uh, I am Tracy Guerreri, and I actually, when I came to District 41 17 years ago, I was, uh, I had taken time off from teaching. I was in another district and I interviewed and Dina was actually on the team that interviewed me. Mm. And when I went home that night, luckily I got job offers from two different places here and where I had left. So I had a tough decision to make. But in that like 30 minute interview time, it's all it took <laughs> to know that I wanted to be someplace that had people like her. Hmm. And from that moment, I've had the opportunity to work with her in so many different capacities as both a, a department member, a, a co-chair on so many different committees, and now seeing her in this role. And I have a lot of the students that she works with. <laughs> so I get to see truly from day one to now the change that has happened. And I know it's not me, so it's her. <laughs> so just in every aspect of her personality, from a role model, model for educators to students to, to basically anyone that has any impact on education at all, she's absolutely where she's supposed to be. I'm sure she would have been a fabulous dentist, but this is absolutely where you were supposed to be. And I just could not possibly be more proud to have spent the last 17 years with you. Oh, it, well, uh, welcome, <laughs> that's why. What this district has provided me for the last 30 years um, has just been so wonderful. Uh, I did want to be a dentist, and when I got to dental school at Loyola, and I came home and I told my parents that I don't want to be a dentist, they were in shock, and 
Um, they said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a teacher. And they said, well, we will support you in, you know, anything that you do, because um, we always have. And I wish they were here tonight to see this, because um, this is what I really wanted to do. Uh, this is what I was born to do. I love these kids. Um, I'll do anything for them. And District 41, I just, the parents, the board, the administration, my colleagues, I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything better. I'm so grateful and blessed to each and every one of you for all of these opportunities. And especially you three sitting here, I am so very proud of you for representing our student body the way that you do and being their voice. And I just have a little something for you. Um, and I just wanna thank everyone again. I, I'm, I'm so humbled and lost for words and, and just so grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. And Dina, while you're uh, passing out, uh, some gifts to the students. I wanted to just turn to see if board members had any additional thoughts that they'd like to, to share about you. I really can't do uh, any justice yeah. to what's already been said, but uh, I know you've been a part of my life as well, Dina, and so I very much appreciate uh, all the ways that you've touched me and my family. Um, and it, it just, <laughs> I got to be honest, sometimes it's really hard to come here after a long day. And um, this is like the best gift to be able to mm. share this and celebrate it as a community. So thank you to everyone who's here um, and for the long dedication um, to District 41 and to, to the kids and the community. Uh, it's so appreciated. Wonderful, beautiful. C Carlos, yes, of course. <laughs> and for me, me personally, uh, Mr. Barr has impacted me in so many different ways. I'm here today because of her, and she's also helped me be a better student, be a better kid, because even my parents are very grateful because of you. They say, even when I misbehave and I'm with you for, like, being in trouble, they say she's a very good teacher. She has helped you a lot, and they're very appreciative of what you've done. Thank you, Carlos. No. Carlos, oh, always take... remember, Carlos, you cannot be the principal's favorite unless the principal knows you. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll do it. I, I say that from experience. Julie. Well, you are Mrs. Sabara in our house. And I went home and told my eighth grader, who you know, that you got an award and were recognized last month. And she said, oh, I just love Mrs. Sabaro. She's just the best. So thank you for the impact that you make on all the students, whether they were on the video or your classroom or in the hallways. Um, and you are back for another recognition. So we are lucky, lucky to have you and um, thankful that you are here. So congratulations. Nice, Julie. Anyone else? Ted. Yeah. Just want to say thank you for all you do. You taught both of my boys science. They're now studying engineering. <laughs> I might have had a little bit to do with that too. But, <laughs> but I, 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 I appreciate all the teachers that have touched um, my family's lives. But thank you for touching ours personally and also all of the families within the district. Thank you, Ted. Jason, you reaching for the button. I'll say something quick about Dina. Um, <clears throat> when I heard about this, I was, my mom was a teacher. And uh, whoever told me about it, I always said, you know, Dina reminds me of my mom um, when she was a teacher in that she can always, my mom was always really good at this. Is, um, and I, I can remember students in particular. Um, but she'd always, she could always recognize the kids that were having troubles, that, that, were, ha that, were, that were on the fringe. and. Those were her favorite students. Those were, those were the ones that really brought her joy, that brought her challenges. Um, 
And that's, that's, that's kind of what she lived for. And, and she just followed those students once they left her class and moved on to wherever they, wherever they moved on to, um, and in all honesty, for, sometimes for better or for worse. I mean, my mom was one that, you know, kid went to jail. My mom would continue to follow up with that kid, communicate with that kid while he was in jail, you know, sending letters. Just, she was her student. And that's, I see that in you, you know. I can't see that in you, you know. Um, every time I run into you, how's Ethan? How's Katie? And, you know, how many, how many summers did Katie spend working at that science camp with you? And it wasn't because she wanted to work at science camps, because she wanted to work, work with mm -hmm. you. So you're, you're a great asset to the district. Oh. And I think you've heard a lot of people say that. So thank you. Nice. Nice. David, please. Um, surprisingly, I wanted to do dentistry, too. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I, I just, I, I'm not surprised that you got this honor. And I'm so grateful that you're representing our district and our community. Um, you know, my son wasn't surprised either. He was like, of course. <laughs> it's, it's Mr. Barr, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> but it, this was so inspiring to, to witness, to watch. And um, I, I was thinking about the role that you took on after you know, having a career here, and then it's like you're almost kind of having to reset. But you know, for you, it seems like no, this is obviously what you would do next. And one of the things that I always try to this motto that I try to live by is like everyone is a soul, and you can see that in your work too, where you really treat people as individuals and honor them, um, no matter where they are, and you meet them where they're at. So thank you for what you're doing, and everybody's really lucky to have you, so. Thank you. And Melissa, you had in. So I'm not even sure if Dina knows how all this transpired, but I'm gonna wrap it up and give people kind of the messy look of how these things happen. And, you know, so this started with a senior cabinet meeting. So it was myself, David Bruno, Chris Webster, and Eric. And we were having the conversation about what's next with the strategic plan and how do we make it happen. And my team knows I get one really good idea a day, maybe. And so I know when I open my mouth, Eric's like, oh no, here it comes, it's money. You know, so I could see <laughs> him tuning out. And I said, I wanna do a teacher on special assignment for restorative. And they were kind of like, yeah, okay. And we continued talking. I'm like, wait a minute, this is my one really good idea for today. And we sat there and kind of poked holes at it. And, you know, while I didn't have, like, I didn't create a role for Dina, this role had Dina in mind. Um, and, you know, so it was messy, um, but it was really about what do we want to do next for kids and what's going to, you know, position us. Um, we have a wealth of resources in, in Matt as a restorative expert and as a district, we hadn't taken advantage of that up until that point because we weren't ready. Um, but in, ad in addition to thanking Dina, I think there's huge thank yous that have to go to, to Matt, um, to the Hadley administration and the Hadley staff because they've allowed you to gradually make an impact on the culture of this building for kids. And so none of this happens because of one person but it happens with that one person. And it took everybody else being receptive and open, some more than others, um, to your nudging in the right direction. But it took administration being courageous enough to like, Steve and I went back and forth on this, believe it or not. This was not necessarily the idea he had in mind, but it was my one good idea and I wasn't gonna let it go. Um, and so, you know, just to really kind of wrap it up, you've done more than we could have ever hoped, and I can't wait to see what it is that you do with this. But, you know, out of 36 years, I've had not a great idea every day, but I've had a few really good ideas. I consider this to be my best one and the one that I'm most proud of. So thank you. And Dina, before I let you and your friends uh, get on with the reading. What I would like to contribute is that uh, in you, um, I see a healer who somehow can always find the light in, in, in a world where young people can feel lost and in the dark. 
and in need of someone to help them repair. What an amazing gift that you bring. Uh, and secondly, in your work and the way you do it, I see virtue. I see a virtuous act. It's not just a means to an end. There's something genuinely virtuous in the way you do your work. Uh, and I aspire to do it as well in my own life. Uh, so you are a great role model for me and for all of us. So thank you to you all. And we will let you get your evening going. Uh, oh, you can stick around, of course. <laughs> but we'll let you transition if you like. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. It's good to see you. Uh, so these young folks who are sticking around, you got it. We're good. Okay, we're good. Yes, you're 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 doing uh, you're doing work, huh? This is homework. All right. So you want a really long, dragged out? <laughs> okay, we'll make we'll keep it rolling then. You know, since we have, well, not just so your teacher knows you're here, why don't you say your name to the video so then any question, you're there. So what's your name? Uh, Nick. Luke. Tommy. Tommy. Henry. See, now, there's, right. now there's no question that you were here. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, we've got an important presentation. Um, about Churchill and Melissa? Absolutely. Well, that's a hard one to beat, but equally as proud um, is our decision to bring Mrs. Cantor on board to lead Churchill. So I'm going to turn the podium and the mic over to um, Principal Cantor and the team from Churchill. Good evening, Board of Education, District 41 community, and Dr. Kaskowski. Thank you for having us here tonight to provide everybody an update on our data and school improvement plan. Tonight, I, Amanda Cantor, am joined by Carol Van Gorp, our literacy coach, and Katie Lawson, our math coach. We are proud to stand here in representation of the entire Churchill student and staff body who works hard every single day for the betterment of their own learning and the learning of their students. Um, we also recognize that everything we share today as action steps um, is because of the continued contributions of the Board of Education. So we appreciate your support and of course we welcome your inquiries along the way. It is imperative, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. It is imperative that before we delve into test scores, data comparisons, and growth and achievement, that we pause and share a small part of Churchill's story. We must remember that underlying each percentage point and each building initiative are the lovely faces of our students. Churchill is comprised of a diverse group of students who come from a variety of socioeconomic, ethnic, religious, and language backgrounds. We support programming in dual language, English language learning, tiered math and reading instruction, tiered PBIS behavior support, special education, and even an extended day kinder program. Much of the work we will share tonight as our school improvement plan was put forth through the analysis of data and decision making by our building leadership team. year, map data was the first measure of performance I familiarized myself with. Within our map data, we can assess to what level students are demonstrating high achievement, meaning they're performing well on the assessment, and to what extent students are demonstrating high levels of growth, meaning they're making great progress from one assessment to the next. Historically, Churchill has been achieving in language arts around the 54th percentile. You will want to take note in these slides that the most recent data is on the left-hand side. We were excited as a staff in winter of 2024 to see our upward progress achieving on average 60% in ELA. We attribute this trajectory partially to our grade levels who were engaging in the pilot literacy curriculum and saw great success from utilizing small group instruction to meet the students' needs. This achievement on Winter Map was a huge celebration as a building, one where we even came together at 8.15 in the morning before all the students arrived to celebrate. We have not demonstrated this level of achievement on Map in many assessments prior. As we announce, 
One of these ways is in our structures for identifying students who benefit from receiving our multi-tiered systems of support. Additionally, we committed on day one of Institute Day this year as a staff to make data-driven decisions for our students. This includes ensuring students have access to text at their level, incorporating phonics instruction, creating skill-based groups in reading, and monitoring progress, not just on a map assessment, but each and every day. Administratively, Tim and I have used the evaluation process as well as our classroom walkthrough checklists to engage in professional dialogue with staff around high leverage best practice instructional practices. Here you will see our growth trends from fall to winter over the course of the last three years in ELA. It is important to note that while our achievement data pulled each and every student who took the winter map assessment, our growth data will only pull students who began the year at Churchill in the fall and continued into the winter map assessment. This will be important to note later when we look closer at our subgroups. Once again, we know there is continued room for improvement, but we are proud of the level of growth that we saw from our students in English language arts from fall to winter this year. It far exceeds the growth we had seen historically in the same band of time. As we look closer at our subgroups, we know we have more students than ever before that are entering children. Churchill as newcomers. As well as the number of students accessing our free and reduced lunch program has grown by about 20% in the last two years. Many of these students, as detailed a few slides ago, come into school demonstrating low achievement scores, averaging between the 30 to 40th percentile. This provides a lot of room for growth. And this data reveals that our students in some of our most at-risk populations are making growth. Once they enter our classrooms, thanks to the Board of Education, they have a viable curriculum. They have access to a plethora of resources. They are given formative assessments administered by their teachers and instruction designed to meet their needs based on this data. And therefore, they do make significant growth. I'm now going to welcome Carol Van Gorp up to share a little bit about how we use our PLC process to impact our school improvement plan. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having us here. Thank you to the board for our new curriculum that's coming, and Dr. Webster and all the stakeholders. We are very excited about it. Um, we were asked to talk about the PLC, and I actually think there have been a really few significant PLCs, some of the shifts we're doing, that have really helped. And one of them is what we call inter-rater reliability. So teachers come together. We look at some writing assessments, and then we do what I call a whip around. So we're all looking at a sample. We're all scoring it individually. And then we kind of score it, and we compare. So if we're only one rip band away, we're good. If we're two, we pause and have a conversation. And that's really where the instructional shifts are allowed to happen. You know, we, we talk about what our expectations are, and there's a lot of research about how teaching improves when you have those kinds of conversation. Kids learn more. So we're, we're really implementing that. Um, we've had teams who have utilized that, and then you get to the midpoint, and one student or one teacher's class is doing better. And then we can say, what are you doing? They're sharing resources, they're sharing ideas, in some cases coming to our staff meetings and sharing some of the things they're doing in their instruction. So that's been an exciting part of the PLCs this year. I think um, another one is um, we have talked a lot about the map data. We've done deep digs last year and this year with that and aligned it to standards. And we all set a goal, and it was it sounds small, but if every teacher set a goal for two students, to move up an area, we could significantly impact um, our student growth. So everyone was tasked to find two kids. And what can we do in our small group instruction to move them along? And that was the focus with tier two. And we're working on that still. Um, yeah, I think those are some of the, the big things that we've done so far. I don't know, that's it. <laughs> a lot of other things curriculum-wise, but that's a little bit different. Thank, so, you, Carol. thank you, Carol. You can go ahead and go to the next slide, thank you. 
As we analyzed our um, subgroup ELA data, oh, excuse me, I lost my spot there. As we shift to our math map assessment, we note our map math achievement remains around average for the last three school years. In order to improve this achievement, we continue to assess our use of instructional time in our math block, ensuring that we're incorporating a fluency, shared, and guided component. Additionally, teachers have done a great job incorporating purposeful, independent practice aligned to Eureka Squared and using formative assessments to determine groupings and future lessons. As we analyzed our subgroup math data on MAP, it is evident that we have the opportunity to put in some initiatives for our English language learner population. And one of those initiatives comes in supporting this group social and emotionally. Our team, including Central Office, has come together this year to create a streamlined process around how we support students who are demonstrating level one proficiency as an EL student or entering Churchill as a newcomer. This plan includes visual supports, a parent survey, intentional class placement, and even a pilot Lexia English initiative. Learners are able to then access the math curriculum that's going on in their classroom because they're set up for success socially and emotionally prior to entering the learning environment. Additionally, to speak to this data, our special education team is very skilled at coming together collaboratively to ensure student goals, minutes, and accommodations in math are suitable to each individual learner. Our growth in math, according to MAP, has looked similarly this year as years prior. In making the transition to Eureka Squared, we've worked as a Churchill team to maximize our understanding of the components of the new curriculum and use it to its fullest potential. As we continue to strengthen this understanding and familiarize ourselves more with the resources, we expect to see continued improvement. We continue to be impressed as an administrative team when we engage in evaluation conferences to what extent teachers are really reflecting on each and every decision they make throughout their math block and then the impact it has on students. I'm now going to welcome up Katie Lawson, our math coach, to share with us a little bit about the PL. PLC processes and how they impact our math school improvement plan. Thank you for letting me talk board. Um, in order to continue to improve growth for our students, the teachers have been really using the PLC process to look more in depth at the new Eureka Squared program. Um, we are looking at assessments and quizzes and kind of aligning them for each module to go along with the scriptures so that way our students are finding mastery and determining where that mastery needs to be in and where we need to go. Um, we are also looking at our lessons to determine the strategies and skills that the students will need to help them master those skills. During our discussions, we have a lot of talk about previous skills that the students will need to help them understand. And then we also focus on where that skill is going to go forward into the next grade or the next grade, like how they're going to use those to move on. Um, this will also help us impact our daily tier one improvement growth as we go through. The district as a whole has also been um, providing professional development. All the math coaches have been doing this in PLCs to help maximize our understanding of the updated curriculum. Um, the last month or so, we've been focusing specifically on the fluency component and how we can determine what routine works best with our students based off how the, like, how the teachers know what their students are doing. Um, there are usually two or three routines, um, and it's more we're trying to take it to which one do we need to do for our class today that will help them either work on the skill we're doing or a previous skill or something that we're going to be learning you know, next week or something. So. Um, we will continue to strategically plan our lessons based on the needs of each class and improve our students' mathematical skills. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. Although MAP is only one measure of performance, this is an important point for us to pause and to bring forth the details of our school improvement plan solidified by our building leadership team in the first trimester. Our goals are derived, as you can see from the top, from our District 41 strategic plan and focus on three main areas, using data to differentiate instruction, taking collective ownership of our school culture, and engaging our students in our PBIS systems. 
As a leadership team, we sat at our meeting together and we were able to actually break down each of these SMART goals into a list of action steps that are currently in practice in the building and help us to meet this goal. It was a really impressive conversation as we continued to see the list grow and it became a reality that we are constantly working towards these three goals. As we move into IAR data, you will note that we do not yet have our IAR scores from this school year. Reading IAR differentiates itself from MAP in that it includes multiple writing prompts. MAP does not assess writing in this same way. Additionally, if we noted that IAR is an assessment that requires great stamina for our students, and I'm, three, our, I'm sure our three student board members can attest to that. Um, students must read and reread multiple long passages, whereas on MAP, they may encounter some more short excerpts or even get asked questions about just a few sentences. By analyzing the structures of these tests, we've better been able to have conversations as a coaching team and an administrative team to make sure that we're setting up our students in a way that they can truly show all that they do know and practice in the classrooms on the IAR assessment. So those were some of the conversations that were occurring as we headed into this year's IAR test. Over the last five years, a small percentage of students in our subgroups are meeting or exceeding grade level standards according to IER when compared to our general school population. It is important to note that IER is administered to only our students in third, fourth, and fifth grade. Additionally, we ensured this year that our students in our English learner subgroup had access to the accommodations that are set forth by the Illinois State Board of Education, such as extended time. Again, a small shift that we know will help set our students up for success because they'll feel empowered and in control of the results as the environment is set forth for the test itself. On the math IER assessment, Churchill outperforms the state of Illinois average. Um, this is an important point to note because it does make clear that in grades three through five, students are performing the Illinois state standards for math in their classrooms and are doing their very best to apply that and demonstrate those skills on IER. Many of our students in subgroups have growth to make in order to meet proficiency on math IER. Over the last three years, we've seen an upward trajectory on math IAR for our English learners, whereas the opposite trend can be noted for our special education population. Many conversations continue to occur amongst our special education team in accordance with what accommodations and supports should be put into students' IEPs and put into place for, again, them to show their very best knowledge on the test itself. Earlier, when I was discussing our subgroup data for MAP, I mentioned that we have spent a great deal of time at Churchill discerning what is the most pivotal practice and program for our students below the 30th percentile to receive as their Tier 3 instruction. With the support of Chris Webster from Teaching and Learning, as well as the brilliant idea from GECRC with High Impact Tutoring, we were able this year to pilot the Lexia program for 41 of our um, most significant, neediest students. Um, as you can see here, this program has paid off in dividends for our students. This data truly exemplifies the ways in which the Lexia program is closing the achievement gap. For instance, you will be able to see that nine students since beginning have progressed to skills in their grade level, and 14 students are now only one grade level behind. As a reminder, this data is representative of only a small sector of students who were identified for high impact tutoring in conjunction with GECRC and their data, but we are extremely proud of these students and really appreciative of the leadership of Carol Van Gorp in initiating this program with our students and assisting our reading and math assistants in understanding how to utilize it with students to its utmost potential. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Carol to tell you more about the benefits of what the Lexia program looks like when you walk in and see it with kids at Churchill. 
Hi, thanks again. Um, just so you guys know, when you come into the Lexia program with an assistant, there's a, there's a model that we use. They're on the program for one unit, which is maybe four to five minutes or working with the student. And then the program actually flags a red apple. It tells the student and it tells the assistant that the kids are having an issue with something. Um, and what will happen is um, they will then instruct Lexia has different lessons that they can actually use, and then they'll instruct that. And when they feel they've, you know, sometimes it takes two, three, four, five, six, ten days, and then when they have that skill, they will mark it as that they have delivered it, and then the student has another opportunity to practice it again. And then if they don't, they go back to a lower level. It's almost like a gaming situation with that, that lower level type of thing. But I have to say the assistants and the staff in general has really embraced it. It's like Churchill reads. We are enthusiastic. We're creating a culture of readers. And this has taken it to our kids who need that impression made on them probably the most, they will routinely come up to me, even Katie, right, Ms. Van Gorp, I just moved up a level in Lexia. Um, so it's really exciting. It's creating, it's adding to the culture we're creating there that we are readers at Churchill. Um, I do want to point out like too on this that, you know, you might have a fourth grader who tested in the first grade level it's very sobering or even pre-k so what the program will do it's almost like swiss cheese right there's all these holes a student might have and we want you know american cheese we want them filled in so if you don't know the three sounds of ed which is a first grade expectation that program is going to pause you there and you have to go through all those skill sets to move on to the second grade and third grade and fourth grade so the kids are really accessing that with the help of these amazing assistants and the staff so um Onward, you know, soldiers. So here we go. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much what it's like. So thank you. That was a great way to bring it to life. Thank you, Carol. Can I just show one thing? Sure. I just want to show you guys. These are the actual. They get a certificate. These are really common. I wanted to show you what these kids do. They're like, I got a certificate, and I just wanted to show you guys what they kind of look like. Um, the kids get super excited about a simple certificate, and I just don't want to forget that. So. And the way that she's passing these out right now is the way she passes them out each morning and after school to different staff members and asks us to go congratulate these students when we see them, pick them up from their classroom. Um, so like she said, it's really created a culture of reading and accomplishment and pride for our students. Um, and the data is a testament to that. Thank you, Carol. Hey, just a quick question, Alexia. Yeah, like yes. You, how long have you guys been using it? Since the beginning of the year, it, it kicked off more like October. Uh, originally, the program started as GECRC. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Okay. There you go. The Illinois Science Assessment is taken yearly by our fifth graders. It is an assessment that hones in on science literacy skills. So in some ways, it, the data does mirror what we're seeing in IAR um, because the skill set students need to put forth in some ways are similar. Um, in the classroom, we continue to see really great engagement in science as our teachers incorporate lots of hands-on science labs. Um, many grade levels are currently engaged in planting, um, in activities where they come together as a group and they, they then couple these hands-on activities with the science nonfiction text and there's that alignment. Go to the next one. Could you go to the next slide please? Thank you. Comparatively Churchill kindergartners um, do enter their kindergarten year with fewer skills in some cases than their district peers. Um, thankfully, a few components of our current kinder program greatly support them achieving these skills quite quickly once they enter into our front door. Um, some of those initiatives are our extended day kinder program. Um, so we have about 30 students who attend school in kindergarten full day. Um, they begin the day or spend the afternoon with their homeroom teacher and then spend the other part of their day with our extended day classroom teacher. This gives them access to over an hour 
of extra instruction in both math and reading on top of an additional opportunity to gather their social emotional skills and get practice with engaging with their peers in play and appropriate school behavior. Additionally, our manageable class sizes and additional aid support in kinder have helped to ensure all students acquire kindergarten skills. We look forward to the evolution of this data as we head into the construction for the full day kinder center at Churchill and we know it will shift at that point. We continue to evaluate our student attendance rates and work to improve student attendance. Teachers form really strong relationships with students and their families and frequently communicate with families about what they're seeing when a child may be absent for an extended number of days. We talk about at the building, even if it's just somebody who may be sick at home with a cold and you know that, it's always helpful to reach out, say, how are you doing? We miss you. We want you to be back as soon as you can and keep that back and forth report so that the students know they belong at school and we want them there each and every day. In addition, our school nurse has been wonderful at working closely with families in those situations where their health may not be exactly where they want it to be. She's proactive in reaching out to um, the family as well as getting doctor's notes and whatever the family needs to ensure they can come to school each day. From our front office team, we share student attendance rates with families when they shift to over 10% of the school year. And additionally, throughout the year, we've included increased communication about the impact of student attendance in our community newsletters. Next slide, please. Our positive school culture undoubtedly shapes our ability to meet our goals collectively. We celebrated in the fall of 2023 that we had no staff members who took the Human X survey at Churchill who were demonstrating low levels of engagement or satisfaction. We attribute this to the clarity and consistency that the building leadership team was able to approach the work with as we headed into the beginning of the school year. A huge thank you to that team for the extra time they invested over the summer so that I could get up and going and get us set for the school year right from day one. Um, we wanted to streamline the process for school functioning to make it easier for staff to have that stead focus um, focus um, on learning. You know, when a staff member may have to think about, wait, where is my duty schedule? Where am I supposed to be in the morning? Or wait, what time does my class switch from lunch to recess? Those types of thoughts, when they're not clear and communicated, can make it difficult for a staff member to focus on their lesson planning, their assessments, and all of the management that I alluded to with groups and instruction. We also wanted to share the statements under quality as this was the area selected by our leadership team for our school improvement plan. I think we can all agree that if staff is on a team that works towards excellence and encourages going above and beyond, we are surely going to make great progress for our kids. And lastly, the five statements in the bottom right corner were the top five statements for Churchill. The words within those statements really say it all pride, contribute, engaged, satisfied. We do have the right people in the right seats moving in the right direction. So we leave you with another huge thank you for your time and attention. We are proud of our students and I am very proud of our staff. We know that with continued attention to our school improvement plan, we will make great impact for our students' future. We will be back next month to share a little bit more with you specifically around our Churchill pride and to help answer the question, why do we choose Churchill? Thank, thank you. you thank you very much. more than happy to take questions and and um, board i want to uh, invite if there are uh, a couple of questions we will uh, take a brief pause at about in about five minutes uh, but if there is a question or comment that anybody would like to raise uh, at the moment we can certainly entertain that i know i got one that i gotta ask but I, i'm deferring to see if anybody has a question so the high impact tutoring with those 41 kids showing the grade jumps within the year, as, as much as two, perhaps, grades. Uh, I'm, first of all, fantastic uh, affirmation of the power of doing really good 
not all tutoring really has been found to make a difference, but th this one apparently is showing uh, real positive results. So I have a question. In what context, what is the setting for that high impact tutoring? And what I have in mind, is it like one kid working with an intervention, a coach? Is it two kids? H how are you doing that? Can you briefly explain that? And then, yeah, we have a few minutes. Absolutely. And Chris, feel free to jump in if you'd like to begin, and then I can add on specifics. So we had originally started, we were going to do this with GECRC right. um, after school. And unfortunately, the, the tutors, we weren't able to get the tutors that we needed to do it through GECRC. So um, I pivoted, and I said, let's just build it into the, the school day at Church Hill and use GECRC to kind of be the secondary or third level support. So what we what we have done what they have done at Churchill is they roll it into their intervention block with our interventionists, our math, our reading and math interventionists, and the program consists of both independent guided and like practice work. There's an assessment that helps determine where a child is is at, where their skill level is at. They have some time for independent practice, but the biggest key component to the high impact tutoring is the work that they get to do with our reading and math interventionists, um, where that really targeted time that they meet every single day during their intervention block and then follow it up with practice, independent practice using Lexia. We do have a couple of students, I think, are we up to four, I think, at GECRC that get another dose of it at GECRC because that's really where they're the capacity is for them at GCRC. That kind of, we have supplemental work that we call, that Carol helps to, I'm sorry, five, six, up to six, that's good. Um, six, six of the 41 that are at GECRC. Um, Carol helps to collect um, some work as an additional level of support for them. So they actually get like a, a, th a no, third level of intervention. So they get their classroom course the core um, instruction, mm -hmm. they get the GEC, the um, Lexia, and then a handful of kids, six of them, um, also get additional support at GECRC. So we've been seeing, we actually started this, um, we've been, we talked with GERC, GECRC and had training through ISBE uh, last spring to get certified to be high impact tutors. Um, and then with the kind of the, the detour a little bit with the tutoring, we didn't actually start until just about Thanksgiving. And then we had the winter break, and then we had you know, an interesting January. So um, we really have been going full steam since uh, middle of January. And the improvement that we've seen has been absolutely phenomenal. I cannot wait to see uh, where we get at the end of the year with continued. Um, it is my plan to continue this at Churchill for next year, and then see how this aligns with um, their proposed literacy curriculum that you're going to hopefully approve tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and then see how that fits in. And hopefully, the goal is to expand it across the district so that we have this uh, available for all students. Hadley also was part of that training. Um, and they do also high impact tutoring. Uh, they do it after school um, with teachers here at Hadley. So we've found different ways to um, implement this in our district. I'm not the, the expert, and there's lots of good things to, to look at, but to, for me, when I think about closing that opportunity gap, this is one of the most hopeful things that I have seen in, in the time that I've been fortunate enough to, to sit on this school board, so I um, look forward to seeing more. A any last yeah, slide I, before we I'll just jump out that. I, it's exciting to see that implementation this year and really to see where that really changes those IAR numbers next year. Um, <coughs> With the you know that that specific high impact work, it, 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 Bob said it's exciting to see. Absolutely. All Thank right, um, and are we good? We can just briefly, Amanda. Sure. Oh yeah, please table. Um, thank you for the work that you all are doing. It's amazing. Especially, I think you guys should have started with the human X slide first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before introducing all the data, because that that shows when the teachers are dedicated and committed, and enjoy coming to work, then they'll you know, the students will get the fruit of that too. So, um, but you had mentioned that you provide parent surveys um, for some of the students that, you know, may not be um, hitting the goals that you want. So I was just wondering, like, is it making sure that, you know, there's no language barrier and, you know, like how many of those parents are actually responding? Like, what's the engagement like for that? 
Absolutely, great question. Um, like I alluded to, that is in partnership with our um, language programs um, and our multilingual liaison, Eleanor, um, does that outreach um, to each newcomer family, um, making sure that, yes, they are able to understand the questions, that it's in their language, um, and then she does an excellent job communicating it back to our building, and depending if that student is joining our dual program or our monolingual program, then we get it out to the classroom teachers and the ESL team that will support that child. Uh, it's been really beneficial because sometimes that's the first opportunity the family may get to say, my child has a learning disability, or at their old school, they didn't talk to anybody. And we can then grab our social emotional team and make sure that when that child begins, we have as much support in place for them to be successful. So it really is a partnership. Okay, Amanda, thank you. Thanks the team, uh, and we'll just take a brief five-minute pause here. The board will be in recess. Thank you very much. Thank you.